Anglo-Saxon Crime and Punishment today and you can start with the title and writing down four key words, especially if you're not entirely sure what they mean. The first word is superstitious. So we're going to decide uh, if Anglo-Saxon law and order was based on superstition or rationale. Right, is it, so has it been a rational decision or is it based on superstition? Well, we'll start with superstition. What is superstition? That's when people uh, don't walk under a ladder. You know? Not walking under a ladder is going to have n like no effect on your life whatsoever. Whether you walk under a ladder or you don't, it's not going to bring you any bad luck, but people believe it. So it's some irrational belief um, in, in some way. So is it based... But rational thought is thinking... Um, if I park my car there, next to those builders, there's a chance that a brick might land on my car. That's using rational thought and not superstition. What else is superstition? Uh, star signs, all that, Capricorn, Sagittarius, Libra, all that business. You know, there's absolutely no proof that those things are true. It's superstition. Whereas rational thought would say this person maybe has a brain scan and that explains their personality. You know, so if you, some people explain people's personality from star signs, psychologists or psychiatrists or doctors trying to understand why somebody's got some sort of thing with their personality might scan the brain and find something out rationally instead. So rational is th based on facts and thinking things through based on the facts. Superstition is based on no facts um, and just superstitious beliefs with the world, i.e. star signs, i.e. that trial by uh, ordeal, God might show you the answer as to whether somebody or not was guilty, which we know is a bit of a superstitious belief. It's not true. You know, people, you could have the holiest person and the most innocent person in the world who grabs a hot iron and gets an infection off it. It was based on superstition. Um, what else have we got? Uh, we've got, is it based, is it, uh, I've forgotten myself now, is it primitive or sophisticated? So primitive would be really, really basic. Um, so you've got prime, uh, primitive man, right at the start of, of the human history where they're in cavemen with their out, the stereotypical animal skin outfit and a, maybe a club or something going, huh. Well, that's it. That's what in my head I think primitive. It's really, really basic. Sophisticated, of course, is it makes me think of complicated, more advanced. So you've got to think. Saxon crime and punishment. Yes, it was a thousand years ago. And this is the thing here. For a thousand years ago, is their crime and punishment more primitive, or actually are there some elements of it that are quite sophisticated? You know, for their time. You have to judge them in their time. Of course, if you judge it against today's standards, then it's all going to be primitive, probably. Um, but they don't have the access to technologies and things that we have now. So you've got to really think about this one. For them at the time, with the things available to them, are the decisions they've made on crime and punishment primitive, behind their time? Or are they a bit sophisticated? Maybe they're a bit ahead of their time. Maybe they're doing some things that you go, well, that's quite clever, that, actually considering they don't have DNA and fingerprinting and all that business. Um, so there we go. Was Anglo-Saxon crime punishment primitive, sophisticated, superstitious or rational? Um, and you should be able to remember some Anglo-Saxon crime and punishment. I'll quickly run through a few bits. Tithings. Groups of, of uh, 10 men over the age of 12, I uh, believe. We did about before. Um, so yeah, 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 and they're responsible for each other's behaviour, collective responsibility. You've got the Ver Guild, which is the payment instead of a, which was to try to prevent the outbreaks of blood feuds, which of course would go on for a long, long time. More prevalent in Northumbria. You've got trial by ordeal, trial by jury. What you might find out today are some other ways that they did trial by ordeal, because you know it wasn't just carrying the hot iron. They had some crazy ones. If it was me I'd, and I was being put on trial for ordeal, I'd say, um, you know. I'd like the one with bread, please. But of course, that one was only available to priests. So I'd have to be a priest first. So they kind of get a good deal. Other people are getting trial by hot water, hot iron or cold water, where they might drown or boil or anything like that. Um, what have we got? Capital. What is capital and corporal punishment? Stick this in your answer as well. Capital punishment is death. 
corporal punishment is harm. Ah! Um, and in the ta kind of Anglo-Saxon period, they, they often saved corporal punishment, like ah, hurt, something that hurts, um, for people who were caught twice, you know, re-offenders. And very often it would mean getting your hand chopped off, so a bit worse than somebody pinching your cheek. Um, capital punishment, death, was really only kept for the really, really bad crimes. Um, some serious crimes that carried it, for example, were treason, which again you might remember from the Anglo-Saxon course. So there we go, and you're going to put all of these crimes, all these details, in a little grid, a matrix we'd call it, to indicate what you think about whether it's primitive, sophisticated, superstitious, or rational. Of course, the best thing it could be is rational and sophisticated. And the worst thing it could be is superstitious and primitive. There we go.